tomorrow and the next day because uh, there's a meeting being held among the BRIC nations, as they're called, in Russia. And um, they're going to discuss this. And the United States asked to go to the meeting and they were refused. They didn't want them there. And um, the, the the bottom line here is that Japan is totally captive to the people who control the United States. So they say what they're told to say. Israel is the same way, etc. And um, I think that um, you're going to get a lot of talk about the dollar, but in the, in the final analysis, it's going down. And there's just no two ways about it. And of course, the gold and silver price and the coin shares, they go all over the place. But it can't be helped when you've got a, uh, the government that's, um, uh, totally corrupt. Both parties. I mean, nobody's got a monopoly on this, believe me. There's some bad people out there. And so with that, we'll go on to the next question, which is from, I guess it's John. John. I thank you both for answering numerous questions during the past shows. Help and advice. Do you think that all the foreclosed property is going to be turned over to China because the U.S. owes them? And the answer is no. We don't even know if any property is going to be turned over to China. We hear rumors of that, but we don't know. No, they like bigger things, Bob. Manufacturing plants, uh, car plants. <laughs> you know, they're Who not going to go after the home. Well, especially in the neighborhoods that some of them are in. Uh, second, uh, how much gold and silver... Should one have to survive the hyperinflationary period? And my answer is I would have all my money in gold and silver related assets because in the final analysis, uh, they're going to um, be the only place that you're safe. And so that's my answer to that. Uh, my, my wife is an MD, and I plan to become a public adjuster. Um, do you know of any positions that might weather the coming economic calamity? Now, that's a hard one for me to answer. I got my mind on so many other things. And I'll have to say, no, I don't have an answer for that. Do you, Melody? Nope. I mean, I checked at them, uh, the, the diva. Uh, employment agency, and there was nothing there. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, if you're unemployed, you'll pretty much go for anything. I mean, I had someone ask me the other day, their daughter was interested in becoming an attorney, and she liked a certain area of work, and, you know, they certainly can specialize in a certain area if that's an area they like, so and she'll probably do well, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it's right back to that suitability thing. Mm-hmm. Well, a question here. Um, did you get the letter from Chris, the law one? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Can you read that? I can, I'm going to lose my voice if I do. Are you talking about the re about the logic, the dumbed-down approach? I got several of them, so I'm not sure which one. It starts out a scenario. As of today, one ounce of gold is nine hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Can you do that one? I've already done three programs today. This is four, and I've got two to go. You just want to watch that soccer game, don't you? <laughs> I'm watching it anyway. In fact, it just ended. One of my subscribers plays for the Italian national team. His name is Luca Toni. He's very famous. He won the Golden Foot Award last year for the Bundesliga. He plays for Bayern München right now. 
He scored 31 goals last year, and he thinks the same way you do. And uh, and uh, Italy's playing in the United States, and the game was one to one, but uh, the U.S. got a red card, and so they're playing short a man, and uh, that's pretty hard to do against the one of the, well, the team that won the World Cup last time. And um, to make make a long story short, Italy's ahead two to one. And my subscriber did not score today, or not least as yet. I, I think they have a couple of minutes left in injury time. And, uh, boy, they're trying hard to score. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the goalie stopped it. That was, that was our subscriber, Luca Tony. <laughs> he got robbed. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, would you read this one, please? Sure. Um. But we we spoke a lot of last week. We've been getting a lot of questions on about you know the, the dollar devaluation, and um, um, she wants to know if we could spend some time on the program explaining the unraveling process as to help for those who have a little more difficult for people to get it. And um, uh, she goes on to say how uh, accurate and logical is her theory in basic terms. Uh, this is her attempt to try to connect the dots and, and to have a better understanding the probability of the process. So the scenario is, as of today, one ounce of gold would be based at 950. And she talks about the dollar collapsing tomorrow with a new currency being issued to replace the old dollar. And she's pretending that we call the new paper currency the blue dollar, uh, which would have to be backed by a percentage of gold. Uh, government says that you have 30 days to exchange all your old green dollars for the new blue dollars. And the exchange rate is uh, uh, $1 to every old, uh, to every $10 of old green dollars that you have in your accounts or in your physical possession. Um, so that way your bank accounts, your credit card accounts, uh, debts get automatically and digitally converted and adjusted based on the new 10 to 1 exchange rate ratio. And, of course, this would happen during the bank holiday. So, for example, if you had $10,000 in your savings account, they would automatically convert it to $1,000 in new blue dollars. If your debt is 90000 they would adjust it to 9000 in the new blue dollars. Your salaries, non-essential goods and services are also readjusted to the value of those new blue dollars based on the same logic. So if your current salary is $50,000 per year, it would be adjusted to 5000 in the new dollars. So if a haircut costs 30 it would now be 3 If you charge $10 for a gift, it would now be a dollar, and so on. But where the government will screw us is with inflation. That's where the government always screws us. Given the rate of inflation, all essential goods and services such as food, clothes, utilities, and energy will increase in the amount of blue dollars required to make your purchase. Thus, the overall purchase power of your money will be severely diminished as you will need to come up with just so many more new blue dollars to buy the things that you need to survive and live on in an environment that's just adjusted all nominal prices, including income downward. So, for an example, you can speculate that if it costs a dollar, new blue dollar for a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread, equivalent to 10 in the old, and perhaps two blue dollars per gallon of gas, equivalent to 20 in the old dollar. Now, where those in possession of gold will profit is the multiplier effect in the opposite direction. Given this speculative exchange rate of 10 to 1, gold goes to $9,500 in old green dollars, or 950 in new blue dollars. So this theory does not take into consideration the investment flight to gold, which will take place and will be driving gold prices upward during the process. So let's say you have bought 100 ounces of gold at 950 ounces today and paid 95,000 in green dollars. Your gold is now worth 10 times the purchasing power in the new money. Keeping in mind that everything in nominal terms has been readjusted downward by the ratio 10 to 1, your wealth and purchase power has increased tenfold, making you quite wealthy in the new environment. To drive the point home, old system of green dollars 
You have an income of 50000 cash and savings account, 10 debt, 90 gold investment, 95000 New system of blue dollars, income, 5000 cash and savings, 1000 debt, 9000 gold investment, 95000 Based on the specific numbers used to illustrate the theory, your purchase power of salary versus gold goes from a little less than uh, 1.2 to 1.20. If this thought process is logical and if this speculation accurate based on what is probable and what is wrong with this thought process and what would you amend to clarify? And then she also wants to know, once the dollar collapses, do you think the U.S. will reissue its own new dollar or will, will we default to some international currency? What is more probable? 